Hello everyone. Up till now we have studied two methods of finding inverse Z transform. First one is power series method and second one is partial fraction method. In this lecture we are going to study third method of finding inverse Z transform which is known as inversion integral method. So let us go to see the details of this method. Using this method how to find inverse Z transform. Inversion integral method. Inverse Z transform of f of Z. Using this method is given by the formula f of n is equal to. It is the summation of residues of Z raised to n minus 1 into f of Z at the poles of f of Z. Where the poles of f of Z they lies inside the contour or the closed curve drawn according to the region of convergence given. So first of all we will see what is mean by poles of f of z. So pole. Pole is what? It is the value of z at which f of z is becoming infinite. Okay. For example, if we consider f of z equal to z upon z minus a into z minus b and if we replace z equal to a here then we will be getting z upon a minus a which is 0. So z upon 0 that is a upon 0 into a minus b so that will be a upon 0 which becomes infinite and therefore a is the pole for f of z. Similarly, if we put z equal to b, then also it will give us b divided by b minus a into b minus b which is 0. That is b divided by 0 which becomes infinite and hence z equal to b is also a pole of f of z. Hence, poles of f of z are z equal to a and b. These are the numbers because of which complex numbers because of which f of z is becoming an infinite isn't it so that is the pole now this pole is distinguished as simple pole and multiple pole let us see next results simple pole pole having multiplicity one it is called as simple pole for example if we consider the previous example f of z equal to z upon z minus a into z minus b then a and b are the poles and they appeared only once in the denominator hence their multiplicity is equal to 1 because of which z equal to a and b they are called as simple poles. So poles having multiplicity equal to 1 are simple poles. Next one is multiple pole obviously pole having multiplicity strictly greater than 1 for example if we consider f of z is equal to z square divided by z minus a bracket cube into z minus b clearly a and b are poles of f of z but if we look at to this pole a then its corresponding factor linear factor z minus a appearing three times in the denominator because of which its multiplicity is three and therefore z equal to a is a pole of order three whereas z equal to b is a pole of order one hence it is called as simple pole. Next formula is residue at a simple pole z equal to a means suppose z equal to a is a simple pole then the residue of this small f at z equal to a is uh, will be evaluated as z minus a into z raised to n minus 1 into f of z at z equal to a where what is this small f it is uh, f of z it is z raised to n minus 1 into f of z okay so we just have to 
uh, multiply this z raised to n minus 1 into f of z by z minus a the linear factor corresponding to the simple pole z equal to a perform this multiplication cancel out the common terms and whatever the expression we left with in that we are supposed to replace this z by a so that will give us residue of this z raised to n minus 1 into f of z at a simple pole z equal to a which is a pole of f of z which is a pole of f of z similarly next one is residue at a multiple pole z equal to a which is repeated m times then residue of f of z uh, residue of this small f at z equal to a that is at multiple pole is given by the formula 1 upon m minus 1 factorial into bracket d raised to m minus 1 that is m minus 1th order derivative with respect to z so d raised to m minus 1 upon dz raised to m minus 1 of z minus a raised to m as this z equal to a is a multiple pole and whose multiplicity is m so z minus a raised to m into z raised to n minus 1 into f of z we have to evaluate uh, the derivative of this function of order m minus 1 first of all once we evaluate derivative of order m minus 1 of this function then after that only we have to replace this z by a and we have to multiply the result by 1 upon m minus 1 factorial so in this way we are going to evaluate residue of f of z which is z raised to n minus 1 of f of z at a multiple pole which is repeated m times so this is all about the theory part for this inversion integral method now we will go for solving examples based on this method example is find inverse z transform of z divided by z minus 2 into z minus 3 square using inversion integral method see here we have considered both the type of poles that is simple pole and multiple pole so solution f of z equal to z divided by z minus 2 into z minus 3 bracket square so z equal to 2 and z equal to 3 are the complex numbers because of which f of z is becoming an infinite and therefore z equal to 2 and z equal to 3 are poles of f of z out of which this z equal to 2 its multiplicity is pole means that factor appear only once in the denominator hence z equal to 2 is a simple pole whereas z minus 3 this factor appear twice in the denominator hence z equal to 3 is a multiple pole which is also called as a double pole therefore we will consider f of z as small f of z as z raised to n minus 1 into f of z which gives us small f of z as z raised to n divided by z minus 2 into z minus 3 now we are going to obtain residues of this term at the poles of f of z which are z equal to 2 and z equal to 3 now let us go to find first residue of f of z at simple pole z equal to 2 which is given by residue of f at z equal to 2 is equal to z minus 2 into this small f of z which is z raised to n minus 1 into f of z and we are going to evaluate its value at z equal to 2 therefore it is z minus 2 into z raised to n divided by z minus 2 into z minus 3 bracket square this z minus 2 z minus 2 will get cancelled and be left with z raised to n divided by z minus 3 bracket square 
so the term because of which denominator is becoming zero that term got cancelled now we will replace z by 2 so that will gives us 2 raised to n divided by 2 minus 3 bracket square simplify it we will be getting minus 1 square which is 1 therefore residue of f at z equal to 2 is equal to 2 raised to n for n greater equal 0 and mod z greater than 2. Now we will obtain residue of f of z small f of z which is z raised to n minus 1 into capital F of z at z equal to 3 which is a double pole that is m equal to 2 and which is given by the formula residue of f at z equal to 3 is equal to 1 upon m minus 1 here m is 2 so 2 minus 1 factorial d raised to m which is 2 so 2 minus 1 divided by dz raised to m minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 into z minus a raised to m that is z minus 3 its square into z raised to n minus 1 into f of z and we want to evaluate its value at z equal to 3. So replace z raised to n minus 1 into f of z by its expression therefore it will gives us z raised to n upon z minus 2 into z minus 3 square and this operator it becomes d upon dz differential operator 2 minus 1 factorial will be 1. Now this z minus 3 bracket square z minus 3 bracket square will get cancelled and be left with residue of f at z equal to 3 is equal to derivative of z raised to n upon z minus 2 with respect to z. So apply the quotient rule that will gives us n into z raised to n minus 1 into z minus 2 that is denominator as it is derivative of numerator minus numerator as it is derivative of denominator is 1 divided by square of the denominator. So here we have evaluated derivative of this term z raised to n divided by z minus 2. Now we will go for evaluating its value at z equal to 3. Replace z by 3 that will give us this expression. Simplifying it we will be getting residue of small f at z equal to 3 is equal to n into 3 raised to n minus 1 minus 3 raised to n. That is this is residue of f at z equal to 3 for n greater equal 0 and mod z strictly greater than 3. Hence inverse z transform is f of n is equal to summation of residues of z raised to n minus 1 into f of z at the poles of f of z. Here we got the two residues that is residue at z equal to 2 residue of f at z equal to 2 and sum here plus residue of f at z equal to 3. Add those two residues we will be getting inverse z transform as f of n is equal to 2 raised to n plus n minus 3 into 3 raised to n minus 1 for n greater equal 0 and out of the two region of convergence we will consider that region of convergence which includes uh, both the uh, both the poles inside that circle isn't it and therefore here if we consider mod z strictly greater than 3 as the region of convergence then inside this circle both the poles z equal to 2 and z equal to 3 they will lie so in this way we will choose region of convergence i hope you have understood this in the next lecture we are going to study how to solve difference equation equations using techniques of z transform thanks for watching this video